What's up, what's up, what's up? What's going on? Welcome back. Welcome back, welcome back. What's going on? Welcome. Welcome. Let's have some fun today. Let's talk about real estate today. We are going to have some fun. Let's talk about real estate today. Uh, welcome back to from data to deals. Um, as usual, today we're going to demonstrate some. I'm going to demonstrate how I pull my data with you. I'm going to demonstrate using the software that I use. It's easy, it's fun. We're in a very, very uh, special times. You know, this is a there's a there's a big wave of opportunities coming. And today I'm going to be talking about the eight points, eight points way to take advantage of the big wave of opportunity that's coming. The goal for today is five thumbs ups. All right. So if I say anything during the course of this session that makes sense to you, just make sure you give me uh, give uh, give it, uh, at least one thumbs up. Okay. At least one time before the end of the session. But like I said, I'm going to share eight very very important things that you need to be taking advantage of right now in this market or lack thereof you know but i'm telling you we're not going anywhere flip and fix is not going anywhere wholesaling is not going anywhere real estate is not going anywhere but there's a few tweaks that you need to add onto your business to take advantage of what's going on right now all right there's a few tweaks that you need to add onto uh, your business immediately or lack thereof, even if you haven't started yet, you're trying to figure things out, there's a couple of things you need to do. So I'm gonna share that with you in a second here. We're gonna get started. Uh, please make sure you give it a thumbs up, make sure you share, 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 let everyone know we're hanging out here. If you know anybody interested in making money in real estate, anybody interested in taking advantage of the session we're in right now. So with that being said, um, I think I should, I should get into the eight points first, and then we're going to start playing around with data. Uh, the county of the day is a place called Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Yep, Milwaukee County in Wisconsin is where we're going today. We're gonna to take a look at that market and see what's going on, see the opportunities in real estate that's in there and the opportunity that's coming as well too. So we're gonna, I'm going to show you that data, everything. As you can see here, I'm ready. We're going to go into the screen, and then I'll show you that data. But before we dive into that, just first of all, let you know that if you're brand new here and you are you may be plugged in from YouTube, Facebook, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you hit the notification button so you know because we'll come back here Monday through Thursdays at 4 p.m., okay? And we're doing the same thing, just making money together. So if you plan on making serious money in real estate with this wave that's about to hit us, a lot of opportunities are coming. But I'm going to tell you how you're going to miss the opportunity. Again, eight things I'm going to share with you today. And you can miss the opportunity if you're not paying attention. Okay. And uh, hi, Krishna. Welcome, Krishna. Um, Thank you so much. I'm completely new to this. How do I start with only... $10,000? Did you say $10,000 or $1,000? You don't need $10,000 to get started. We're going to talk about that in a second. Okay. Really what you need is yourself. That's all you need. Yourself and a strong enough desire. But just hang out with me today. Let's talk about it. If, if there's anything not clear to you, we can answer a question as we go. Okay. We can answer as we go. Again, you put 10. So I'm not sure if you mean $10 now. 
I'm not sure, but it really doesn't matter how much you have to get started. And I'll show you why in a second here. All right. So with that being said, let me go ahead and share this banner. This banner right here, uh, it's uh, the update for today. This is at the eight points. So you can see it's scrolling through the bottom. OK, what we're talking about is real estate investing. What we're talking about is real estate money. I have a book actually in the marketplace that you can absolutely download for free. You can download the PDF for free. It's called Real Estate Money Secrets, where I cover the fundamentals of the business. You can download it for free from realestatemoneysecrets.com or you can go to myempirepro.com. Let me see if I can share that uh, really quickly with you. Uh, let's see here. I think it's this one. No, that's not that one. This one. All right. That's the website right there where you can get that book for free. It's a free PDF. If you prefer uh, the option of audiobook, the option is there as well. If you prefer um, a Kindle book, if you prefer to get a ship to you by paperback is also the options are there as well all right so with that being said uh let's uh go ahead and and uh let me hide this and uh i want you to look at the screen as you scroll through and i will explain everything as we're going we're talking about real estate money money income right from real estate right there are a couple of resources that you need in real estate either time money okay uh you need one of those two okay but you also need skills okay uh which you can easily acquire that's why we're here so you can acquire that skills uh energy right uh hard work you're a hard worker already if you're here hanging out with me you are you work hard so i'm not going to question that you probably have a day job or something like that you you already have that okay so really what you're going to need to bring to the table is a desire an understanding of how money works and money comes to people that bring the most value to the world, not the most physical energy, the most value, okay? That's what that is. So, But we're talking real estate specifically, and things have changed because of what is going on, right? Things have changed. So everyone has an even playing field right now, okay? I don't care how well you did last year in real estate. You're back to here like everybody else, and it's time to learn something new. I don't care how much you think, how many deals you think you didn't close last year, everybody else was closing deals. It doesn't matter. Everyone has an equal, even playing field right now, okay? So that's very, very important, okay? Number one thing that you need to understand is that we look for deals in real estate. That means deeply discounted properties. Why? Because that's how we make our money on the front end. We make money from the beginning, okay? So instead of you thinking, percent which is the normal rule 70 percent you know if you're very conservative you're thinking 65 percent right you got to start thinking 45 55 percent it's just the market we live in on the last session i talked about how you have to structure five percent uh effect into your market you see we're in the same market we're in the same economy so there's no you know there's no how you want to shape it back and forth we're in the same boat does that make sense so um uh, just keep in mind that you're looking for 45 to 55 percent of whatever the property is worth in the last six months i'm going to show you some of that data okay the, so we're back to basics number two 45 to 55 back to basics means you have to get in there and apply some basic rules so basically in the last one year two years three years everyone got excited Everyone got very, very excited and, you know, people were doing deals, hard money lenders, everyone giving people money up to 90%. All of that is out the window right now. It's back to basics. You got to learn how to find deals. I'm going to show you that here in a second. I'm going to show you with the software how to do that, okay? All right. And what do I mean by deep discount? There's no more. It's not 70, 60 right now. You're looking from 45 to 55% if possible lower if you're very busy doing what i'm going to show you here today you will find 30 percent 40 percent on the dollar 40 cents 30 cents on a dollar okay i'm going to show you that here again in a second all right so the third thing that you have to pay attention what is the third thing what is the third thing what is something some of you can you can remind me you already see you scrolling on the screen right private funds okay private funds hard money lenders mortgage so let me tell you, okay, mortgage, hard money lenders, all of those people, they have tightened all of their criteria to get money out in the marketplace. And rightfully so, because they're also scared 
that they don't know. They, they don't want to predict. They don't want to speculate. These are hard-earned money of people. So they want to make sure it's not invested in the wrong timing in the marketplace. So because of that, they have tightened the criteria. Like, for example, you have to have a higher credit score. You have to have all the different criteria that's been loosened up before. Interest rate is the only thing that has been loosened up right now because the government kind of control, the feds control that. They're trying to use that to open up the market and encourage more people to come into the market because that means a better economy for the nation, which is what the nation cares about, right? At the end of the day, that's what the feds care about. They want economy to be flowing. They want, the, the country wants to be able to compete on a global platform, right? So that's number three. Number four, good credit, because of that same reason, the buyers you're messing with need to have good credit, need to have some cash reserves. Those are some of the things you will see in the marketplace. Even at that, they're still very, 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 very tight, okay? So number one, we gotta get back to the basics, okay? We'll get this book. If you don't know the basic of real estate money, get this book, it's available for free, myempirepro.com. Uh, two, 45 to 55% return. Three, private lending only, good credit, okay? All right, number five, I think. I'm looking at the screen as you're looking with me, okay? So three private funds, four good credit. Number five, wave of opportunity is coming because this is the moment everybody going to hibernate, right? Don't do that. Number six, time to buckle down and get to work. Seven, buyers and sellers are scared. Everyone is scared. Don't get delusional. Let's not be delusional. Let's not deceive ourselves. Don't listen to the gurus telling you that nothing has changed. No, things have changed, but that's the more reason why you have to buckle down and get busy. Start building relationships. Start collecting data. Start contacting those, the, contacting the people on that data list. Start generating leads. And start building relationships because some of those people are not going to be able to afford to hold on to those properties. And that's what I mean. Not some. Many of those people are not going to be able to afford to hold on to those properties. And that's what I mean by there's a wave, a massive wave of opportunity that's coming. So you need to take advantage of it. So, but let's be clear. Everyone is scared right now. So this is the good time for you. Because when everyone is scared, you need to gain some courage, come back in the marketplace, learn the skills and start taking advantage of it. This one is a bonus one, okay? So if you're looking to make money immediately, you want to start making money right now. The one thing that never stops selling is knowledge, okay? Especially when it's packaged knowledge in the form of coaching, consulting, in the form of courses, okay? Yes, there are people that frown at that, but the truth of the matter is that one of the biggest businesses in this country is universities, okay? People pay a whole lot of money and owe a whole lot of money in student loan because education if you think education is expensive, you can try ignorance, okay? But the beautiful thing is that there's a new business model called knowledge brokerage, and you can learn how to broker knowledge, all right, and start sharing knowledge. It doesn't have to be knowledge you created, but when you plug into platforms like this, you're gaining knowledge that you can literally start brokering to other people and you can make a whole lot of money doing that you can make fifty dollars you can make one thousand dollars you can make two thousand dollars there's a whole skill set behind that and if you want to learn how to do that there's a there's 11 days challenge that i set up on how to do that in real estate and that's this one go to 11 dayschallengecom and you can take advantage of that so that those are the things i wanted to share with you first today write that down right now 11 dayschallengecom and take advantage of it now, Empire Big Data is the software that I will be using, okay? That's the software that I'm gonna be using in a second here. So I'm about to change and switch screens and let's play around with data, real estate data in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, okay? Let's talk about that. If I say anything that made sense to you so far that you felt like the value, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and make sure you share this session uh, with people now and after after the the live recording, you just if you're here right now, I think there's one person hanging out with me. You're just watching live, but um, please feel free to share the video. It's gonna be an evergreen video because honestly, I went through 2008, and there's just some things after 15 years that you pick up over time with experience. That you know, even though we haven't seen, we've never seen the, pan the pandemic before. Okay, we've never seen that before, but as far as the economy is concerned, and when the when the market panics and they hibernate and they go into hiding, I have seen that before, and I know exactly 
I have a good idea where this is going to land. So let's, uh, you know, that that's why I wanted to share this with you. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen right now. And we're going to go into Milwaukee um, and, uh, and play, if that's okay with you. Uh, we're going to play for the next uh, maybe 40 minutes, 40, 35 minutes. Just play around with data. I'll show you some really cool data from that town. We're going to be seeing it together. And uh, and then we'll take it from there. But if you want to try the software for free for the next seven days, just go to empirebigdata.com and get it there for free. All right. With that being said, let's dive in. Uh, so we're going to, let me see. I got to spell this right. So let me make sure I grab the proper spelling. Milwaukee. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Pardon me, pardon me, pardon me. Let's have some fun. Okay, Milwaukee. Milwaukee. All right. So again, we're going to the county, not the town. So you want to make sure you had town. Okay, this software is called PropStream. Okay, you go to empirebigdata.com and you can sign up there for free for the next seven days. Okay, uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin that's WI, I think. There you go. So it comes up, it's, it comes up as an auto suggestion. That's how you know that you're in the right place. And we're going to go into the state and see the available data there. You see houses, you see. Everything there is to know about the house is more than enough information, okay? So I'm, li I'm liking what I look at. I like to see number in, in the thousands, okay? And I like the idea that there are 30,000 cash buyers in that location, okay? All right, so let me see here. Uh, all right, let's see what part of the world is this? Milwaukee, okay. All right, so it's right above Chicago. You can see the map right there. Right above Chicago, Wisconsin, yeah, towards it look. I think is this considered Midwest? Maybe. Anyway, so this is uh let's see here. Let's just make sure. All right, so we have the uh MLS, that's the houses on the market. Okay, I really don't care for that. I just like to look at that to make sure that people are actually buying and selling in that area. Okay, so these are actually uh houses on the market. And then there's 1,858 houses in pre foreclosures, which means that people are late on their payment and they're heading towards the bank taking their property back. About six of those people have been already scheduled to for their houses to be auctioned. Okay. All right. There's also 214 already foreclosed properties on record. Um, there are 30,000 cash buyers in the market. Why do I care about that? Because cash buyers, especially now, remember what I told you, private funds is exactly the only thing that can win right now. Private funds is the only way to win right now. And it's, that's where the opportunity is, okay? So we need to know that there are people, some of them will, would have, remember I told you the buyers are also scared. Some, some of them will hibernate right now but many of them will be open to an opportunity that makes sense. They probably don't want to spend 70% L loan to value, but they will, they will if, they see, if they see a deal to steal, they will steal it, okay? So I like the 30,000 buyers. How many of those are actually within the last one year? It's a lot less, okay? But 30,000 sounds good. That means it's a market where people are buying, right? Uh, there's vacant property. This is my own personal filter, okay? Now, this is something that I share with my students, uh, my coaching students, but it's but I'm gonna show you everything because every actually from location to location that changes. It may be 11 points, it may be 10 points, maybe 15 points, maybe 13 points. So don't worry about this. This is particularly to a particular market. Uh vacant, uh 7,257 properties are vacant in that area. Okay, that means opportunities you can go after and pick up and buy at a discount. And then find those people and then make money in between. You can make $10,000 in between. You can make $20,000 in between. My highest for one deal is $82,000, okay? Properties that has equity in it, 162,000 properties has equity in it, okay? In that area, there are 283,000 plus 
properties on record, okay? So the first thing I do is uh, the, where the opportunities are. Opportunities can range from anywhere from high equity to pre foreclosures, okay? So high equity uh, is a big list. So to market to them will cost you way too much. The idea here is you don't want to market to everyone. You want to market to people that are most likely going to be open to your offer, but with the least amount of competition, but also with the best allocation of your resources. What is your resources? When I say your resources, I'm talking about the money and the time you spend on this activity, okay? But keep in mind, all of that is a non-factor. If you want it bad enough, the money is a non-issue. Like I said earlier, no, you do not need $10,000, <laughs> okay? No, you don't need anything close to that, okay? Uh, because you're not, this is not the capital to buy the property. This is just to find the owners of this property and negotiate the deal and then lock it up on the contract and then you sell the equitable rights of those of those contracts to other people, okay? That's the whole idea. All right, so um, so let's keep going. So I start from pre-foreclosure. I'm going to click on the button, literally like that. And uh, after that, I'm going to go under filter, okay? And then all of these criteria, I'm going to go through each one of them to filter and narrow down that list because that list of pre-foreclosure is 1,858. Um, I don't want anything more than a hundred that I want to go after for the next one month. Okay. Potentially lower. It depends on your personal budget. That's why I said it really doesn't matter how much you're bringing to the table. The key to this game is really consistency. Okay. It's not a garage or uh, garage quick scheme. It's not a garage or quick anything, but you can get rich very, very quickly. Okay. The idea is to get you rich very quickly. Uh, um, uh, relatively speaking, okay? However, this is going to take skills. But here we are. I'm sharing the skills with you right now, okay? All right. So, um, so pre-foreclosures, we start with that, but we're going to have to filter them down, okay? So how do we do that? We'll go on the filter. Owner occupied, what is my preference? I prefer that the owner doesn't live in the property because that means they are less attached to the property. If you live in the property, that means it's a home, that means they are much more emotionally attached to the property and it makes it that much difficult. If my list is too small, I can come back and include everybody. But for now, I'm just going to say, no, I don't want them to live in the property. The next one is occupancy status. Okay, occupancy status. Um, I like them to be vacant. That's my preference because, again, if the property is vacant, that means we can get in there. If you need some work, we can put in some work and repair the property as soon as possible, right? Boom. So I like it to be vacant, all right? But, again, I would take occupied if my list is not big enough. It just depends on my budget, my personal marketing budget for the month, okay? So, but my preference is vacant. So just on those two criteria alone, if you look at, I'm already down to 39 properties, Okay, already down to 39 properties, but there's a couple of things I like to include on that list. Okay, 39. Remember, I need just less than 100, 100 or less that I can go after for the next two months, depending on my budget, uh, as long as I can be consistent for the next 12 months. Remember, I said this is not about get rich. You may close a deal in the next one month, you may not. It's about committing the next 12 months to this process. Okay. A 12 months uh, in a lifetime, that's not a lot. If you can potentially start making $20,000, $30,000, dollars per year, okay? Uh, sorry, per month, okay? Five-figure monthly income, okay? All right, so let's keep going here. Um, I'm going to go back to the filter, okay? There's something I really need uh, to include here uh, and uh, a couple of things I, I really need. First of all, I go on the properties. I don't want anything that's not residential, so I need to enforce that it's only residential. On top of that, I need it to be single family or multi-family up to four family, four unit property. I don't want anything above that because majority of my buyers, remember I'm looking for deals for these people, for the people on this list, right? So they typically, they don't... Um, they don't want anything above four family properties, okay? All right, so that dropped my list down to 27. Remember, I'm just hiding filter to increase the chances that these are actually deals. I don't want to waste money on things that I know from experience as not turned to be deals. So commercial properties, 
I don't want to spend my marketing dollars or my time on that. Are we making sense? Is that making sense? All right. So I'm going to go back to the filter. Okay, let's go back to the filter. Another thing that I like is I don't want it to be on the market. I don't want listed properties on the market. I like agents, but I don't want to be in the way of an agent. Okay. And the best way to not be in the way of an agent is to generate the lead. I want to generate the lead. I want to talk to the homeowner, right? So once I acquire the property and we get a property fixed and ready to get back on the market, I like paying agents. That's what I like to do with agents. I don't want to be their enemy, okay? Now, if a property is on the market and an agent calls me to potentially pick up the property, that's different because they called me. But if I'm talking to them and I'm on the side of begging them to do deals with me, it's a very, it's a very, it's the worst position of negotiation. The best position to negotiate is when you can walk away and mean it, okay? And one of those is not when you're begging an agent to do a deal with you, okay? So I like off market deals, so I don't want it to be on the market. So I click no on that, okay? And uh, the next thing I'm gonna go to here is pre foreclosure. I'm gonna go under here. And here I need to suppress this list. I only want to deal with notice of default, meaning they already received a letter that they are three months late on their mortgage or whatever that number is for that state because it varies from state to state and sometimes from county to county. But bottom line is that they just received a notification of uh, default. Some, some people call it list pendies. Some states call it list pendies, which means pending lawsuit. It's a notification that, hey, you're late on your payments, right? The other one is auctions. I don't mind talking to people that auction has already been scheduled. I don't want to talk to anything else, okay? I don't want a foreclosed property. That's like dealing with the bank. It's just not the game I'm playing here, okay? There are other times for that in the game, and it's not this one. To keep it simple, if you're brand new, you want to be dealing with the homeowner still, okay? The homeowner already received late notifications, but they're still in control. They are still in control of the property. And that puts you in a very powerful position of negotiation and you can actually help them and you get paid handsomely for helping them. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to just uh, click off of that's that. That's all I need there. Uh, I think that's it. Right. And another thing here, ownership, I need the, I, I like that the property has been owned for a while. So minimum, I like seven years, but I can see that the population in this area is not a lot. I'm going to, relax that criteria to five years they need to have owned the property for five years or more i don't want a person that bought the property uh i don't mind them but i don't want to waste my marketing budget or resources on them right somebody that bought the property two months ago they're already late right now that screams red flag i don't want to deal with, i don't want to waste my money on that uh, if they come to me i can solve any problem because they're that motivated but with me marketing um, I need to make sure that pro this is about resource allocation. I want to make sure that my resources is allocated properly in the right direction. Okay. So that's that. So five years minimum is what I like. So if I take this up, uh, I'm down to 17 properties that I can choose after. Now you may say 17, that's it. Well, you know, it's going to cost me using the same system. It's going to cost me 58 cents for each one, right? 58 cents to, to send a, to send a, a, what do you call it? To send a postcard to these people. So if I multiply 58, multiply by 17, right? To send a postcard to these people will cost me less than $10, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure I send them at least postcard at least once, okay? The rest of it, I'm gonna try to reach out to them by text messages. I'm gonna spend about 88 cents on each of these people. So let me actually put that number here properly and say 88 cents, okay? 30, 30 cents to find their to find their phone number, okay? To find their phone number and their email address. I'm gonna reach out to them using everything. The idea is to track them down and negotiate a deal, okay? 88, okay? And that comes down to about less than $15, okay? Already, okay? The rest of it, I can, I mean, 17. I can text them, I can, because I will have access to their phone numbers. I can text them, I can follow up, I can get on the phone with them um 17 people okay in this market and the idea is i need to reach out i need to make sure i, I initiate contact four different channels ways so sms sometimes voicemail postcards email okay um and then follow up 
okay, make sure I follow up because some people will not respond right away or they respond or they went numb. You got to make sure you follow up. And this is my job to track these people down for the next. Why would I want to track all those people down? These are the reasons right here. Look at the filter. Look, they're not occupied. It's pre foreclosures, vacant property. These are reasons why they will need to sell very cheaply. Okay. Of course, I like it to be residential, single family, up to four unit properties only. Um, not on the market. They are facing foreclosure. They're already late on their payments, right? They came on that record sometimes in the past, even if it's already released, right? But they're struggling with the ownership of this property. And I want to come in and save them for the from the from the dilemma of owning this property. They've owned the property for more than five years, okay? And this one is uh, include unknown dates. Sometimes the property is not recorded properly. I want those on the list too because it's a small, it's a fairly small list. Okay. Now, I'm looking at this list. If my budget, okay, if my budget was, um, remember, I'm spending 88 cents for each for each uh, upfront to get the phone numbers and also to send a postcard. I, I need to make sure I send at least a postcard because postcard is becomes a, the postcard becomes a marketing tool for you because they may hold on to it for months before they call you. Okay. So you want to make sure you're sending that at least once. Okay. Especially when you're, when you've already filtered the list and you're sending just a few, okay. Just a few solidly, potentially highly motivated people. Okay. You want to make sure you're, so does that make sense? Is that making sense so far? All right. All right. Thank you, Krishna, for the feedback. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. So, uh, all right. So let's go back to the page. Um, all right. So for those of you that just plugged in, uh, make sure you give us a thumbs up. If I see anything that makes sense, make sure you give it a thumbs up at least. Uh, we need at least five on today's episode. And we're back here every Monday through Thursday uh, at 4 p.m., okay? And you can try the software for yourself at Empire Big Data for free, okay? EmpireBigData.com. All right, so let's keep going here. Uh, so I'm going to try out the filter and see how much I drop the list down to because there's a couple of other factors I like to add here. And then I'll go back and relax the filters if I need to. So on the bankruptcy, I don't like when they have, if they have an active bankruptcy at the court, I I, I don't want to deal with that, okay? So I'm not going to put it on the target status, I want to suppress that. I, I don't want that on the list. So I'm going to go under quick suppress status. Anything that has active bankruptcy, meaning the property is wrapped up in a bankruptcy lawsuit, that means they can't sell right away. They have to go through the whole process of bankruptcy. I don't honestly understand the whole full thing. All I know is that I don't want to deal with that. Okay. So I'm going to suppress that out of the list. Okay, and that's really all I need to do here. That's really all I care. Different tax. If you want to just tax links only, you can select this. Okay, and uh, if that's the kind of list you're collecting right now, but I don't mind. All of the links are perfect for me. If there's a child support lien, which you know I want to talk to Omar, that's just an additional reasons why they may need to sell quickly at a cheap discount. Okay, you're getting paid as a wholesaler. You're getting paid here for finding these deals. You don't have to come up with the capital. You get paid because you find these deals for people like myself, my network of investors that were always looking for deals like this, okay? That's what you get paid for, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna go on the valuation equity. Um, this list is already very small, but typically I like to be, 50, I like the property to have at least 50% equity or more, okay? So that's 50% under here, okay? So I will put that there and that will suppress that list even further, okay? On the mortgage info, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't really mess with any of this one. Now I can say exclude cash buyer, okay? Um, I can do that, but it's, there's so many criteria already. I don't think it to make it to make any difference. Like, yeah, you know, somebody may be a cash buyer more than five years ago and be in a bad situation right now. So I leave that alone as is, right? Click close here. I'm down to nine properties. Okay. I'm down to nine properties. So what does that mean? I'm going to spend 88 cents on each one, 30 cents to skip trace that list. And then, uh, 
80 cents for each one, uh, and then uh, 30 cents to skip trace, and then 50 cents to send them a postcard instantly. And then my work is using phone to track these people down because the 30 cents is to find their email address. So email, text message, postcard, that's three, right? All right, that's three already. And then follow up, follow up. Uh, you can just, they also have the voicemail, ringless voicemail uh, deal. But text messages is just perfect. It's just where you want to spend your time and it's free. If you have, you have a phone, it's free, okay? This is less than $8, okay, to reach out to the, to find this information and get to work for the next month. Do this for the next 12 months. Don't stop. Record, schedule on your phone what you need to do. Talk to people, follow up with people. Talk to them like re they're regular human beings. The text message is simply, hey, I was, uh, the text message is the first thing is, the first thing I use on the text message is the, question, the name and question mark, okay? So for example, if the person's name is, um, if the person's name is, uh, what do you call it? If the person's name is uh, John, I would say, um, John, question mark. That's the text message. It's as simple as that. I need them to respond. If it's not John, it's the wrong number, and I'll leave it alone. I may say thanks. If I need, if I feel, if I'm in the mood for courtesy, I'll say thanks. But um, I'll just say, John, say, yes, who's, who's this? That means it's John, okay? That means it's John, and then that means it's time for me to reach out to John and have a conversation, all right? All right, so let's keep going here. Um, so, and then if John says, I'll say, Hey John, I was, uh, I was, I was, uh, inquiring about the property, um, at four, one, five, three, uh, South Logan Avenue. I was wondering if you would entertain an offer on that property. I'm interested in that property. And they'll say, um, yeah, sure. Sure. When's a good time we could jump on the phone and you just want to talk. Um, you may say talk. What do you mean you talk? Well, that's a you know, 10 step question you asked. So just a property, you confirm the property, and then you go into, why do you want to sell it? You don't want to tell them, I know that your property is in pre-foreclosure. You don't want to do that. That's creepy. You don't want to say, I know that your property is vacant right now. You want to say, is the property vacant right now? Because honestly, this could be old data. For the most part, it's pretty accurate, okay? But it could be old data, but you want to at least you want to confirm from them, like, um, is the property vacant right now? Okay, how many families? Like it's like three family house, right? Good, good. Why do you want to sell? I mean, you know, the property is, you know, uh, it's just sitting down there. We just want to get rid of it right now. And then, okay, all right, all right. And uh, how many bedrooms? How many? Just want to fact find about the property. Just write down as much information. Tell tell me about the property. What's the story of the property? How long have you owned it for? You can always use tell me the story, <laughs> okay? You can use that all day long, and they will tell you. And people are willing to talk and tell story. People like that, you know, they like that you're interested. And guess what you're doing, by the way, when you're doing that? You're building rapport, okay? Meaning they're getting to like you because that's just naturally what happens with the human brain, right? They're getting to like you, and then by them getting to like you, uh, you increase the chances that you could strike a deal at some point, okay? All right, so um, what... What do you think the property is worth right now? I mean, I don't know. Honestly, you're going to hear I don't know for the most part from a motivated seller. If somebody res responds to your test and say, how did you get my number? You say, well, I'm interested in the property. So I may, uh, I, you know, I pulled a few strings to find your contact information. Are you open to selling the property? You want to end that with a question. Okay. And if you're doing well enough, eventually... You're going to find that you don't have time to answer how did you get my number. You want to move on to the next person on your list as fast as humanly possible because it's a numbers game. It's a numbers game. If you have time, you, you spend time selling people on getting them to talk to you. If you don't have time, which hopefully that's what we want to get you to. You want to have more money than you have more time, right? You want to get them to a place where you just simply say, um, I don't know how I got your number. Are you open to selling the property? I don't, I don't know, you know. Um, you don't want to say it's on a public record. You want to say you just want to have a conversation with a person that wants to have a conversation with you. If you get people that cross you out because maybe randomly they've gotten a lot of offers by text messages and they're just crossing people out around town, don't waste your time on that. Don't respond to that. Don't catch feelings on that. It's not personal. They don't know you. You don't know them. Okay. You're just looking for your next deal. Ten thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars, eighty-two thousand dollars. Okay. Average twenty-five thousand dollars per deal. 
maybe seven thousand dollars maybe you're doing seven thousand dollars per deal but you can close three four deals per month right it really doesn't matter bottom line is that it's a numbers game okay you play the game it's a numbers game it's fine so let's say for example i really want to focus here in milwaukee county in wisconsin um you can say that you know you can say that by the way you can save the search and you can make this your thing everywhere. These are your criteria. You can relax the criteria. You can go in the criteria and say, you know what? I don't mind. I'll deal with uh, I'll deal with uh, occupied. Maybe occupied with the with the tenant, right? And I close it, and that number suddenly increases to ninety eight. Okay, it's less than two. It's less than uh, it's still less than uh, less than uh, less than ninety eight. Now, the bigger your list is, you know, the higher the chances you will hit something. But also, don't forget that if you if you narrow the, the criteria on the list, you're creating depth, okay? So it's not necessarily less quality. You have a less number of properties on your list, but it's better quality in terms of potentially open to selling you a property, okay? So what do I mean by that? If the property is not occupied, that means the property is not being utilized. That means the property is occupying space and costing people money because... This, they have to pay, they have to pay property taxes for every time that property sit down there and it's not rented it's not being used it's costing them money so that's another reason why they may need to sell so when I say vacant right and I say closed and it's nine best believe that this nine properties compared to the 98 is not necessarily a lower quality it's just a matter of you're saving money on spending like you're spending Fourteen dollars now instead of spending. Let's see how much this would have been, right? Instead of spending 90, 90 for ninety eight, you're spending eighty six dollars, right? You spend less than nine dollars, and you're still busy because you're still gonna spend time. Like you will have a better time to really spend on each one of those phone numbers you find and have a conversation. Each property record may come back with multiple phone numbers it will okay many of them will come back with multiple phone numbers so each one each phone number is just another contact because that could be a relative it could be completely another property in another state but they may be open to selling another property in another state and you can do that because this is the virtual real estate investing world that we live in you can do deals anywhere in the nation nationwide okay so by reaching out to people from time to time you can literally pick up another deal that had nothing to do with the property list that we're looking at right now. It will happen. If you're marketing consistently enough, that will happen. Just mark my words. That will happen where the property had nothing to do with 4153 South Logan Avenue. Had nothing to do with it, right? Had nothing to do with Wisconsin. But the person say, do you buy anywhere? Yeah, yeah, I buy anywhere. Do you have a property? Because actually... When people say, no, I don't have a property to sell, the next question you want to ask them is, do you have anything else available for sale? That's the next thing you should be asking them. Hey, you have anything else available, right? Do you know anyone that have a property they need to get rid of? You should always be asking for referrals. Does that make sense? Is that making sense, guys? Is that making sense? Let me know. Let me know if that's making sense. Plug in with me. Talk to me. I know there are three people hanging out with me right now. And uh, I don't know if uh, some of you may want to jump on and ask questions. If you want to jump on and ask questions, you have a good camera and you don't mind bringing yourself on camera. I don't mind doing that sometimes, by the way. I'll drop the link and you can click on the link to bring you inside. If you want to do that, that's perfectly fine. But you need to comment and let me know that you're okay with that. Okay. But if this, if, this, if anything I said so far makes sense, please, please make sure you hit it, the thumbs up at least once. Okay. The goal is... Five for the day. We are three away from our five thumbs up for the day. I would appreciate that. Thank you so much. All right. So is that is that making sense? So now what you could say, okay, I want to do more than nine, but I like the criteria. All right. I like the criteria that we have. I don't want to deal with properties that are not vacant. You may say that. Honestly, there's no real rules to that. Some people say, no, pick up everything, right? For me personally, if the property is vacant. I just find that the conversation is a lot more easier. I do a lot more, a lot less selling when I'm talking to the people because the property is vacant. Okay. So what I can do is I'll go to another county. Okay. If you're part of our family here, we have a list of three, there are 3000 plus counties around the nation. 
You go to another county, the next county over, and you simply go pick up another, you simply go pick up another, uh, another, another property with the same criteria. Okay, so this filter is on right now, right? Let's say I'm going to, I'm going to. There's a county here in New Jersey called Marsha County. Okay, I'm going to type that in, right? And you see how the list will change really quickly. Marsha County, New Jersey. And that's that, right? And you can see that my list will change. My list has 10 additional properties now in Marshall County that fits that criteria. Now, let me go back to Wisconsin. Let me show you something I also like, okay? Let me go back to Milwaukee Key County. Now, you can save that filter as save search. You just save it, okay? Um, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We'll go back there and you see that our list will go back to nine. It's go through all of that database and bring you back to nine properties, right? Some of those properties we have the uh we have pictures. Some of them don't have pictures. It doesn't matter to you. You don't need pictures until you're actually talking to a person, okay? You don't need any more data than the property address until you're talking to a person. When is that point? That point you're talking to a person is when a lead was generated, right? A lead was generated because somebody reached out back to you. Somebody saw a text message from you and they said, yes, yes, I would like to talk about property. There's a property. They may have inherited the property, planned to do some work three years ago, and they couldn't do the work. And, you know, they want to talk. They, they want to get maybe 20 grand and just keep it moving, right? In that case, you just simply, you know, you just talk, right? You just have a conversation, build relationship with them again. Build relationship. Don't worry about contracts. Don't worry about any of those craziness. Contracts is the easiest thing. The part that's the hardest is getting started and have a relationship and start talking to people. That's the part where people get stuck. People don't get stuck at contract. Contract is after the fact, after you've generated a lead, and then you talk to the person. The person says, yes, I don't mind $20,000. $20,000 being 45 to 55% of the property value, right? But you don't have that problem until you get there. Does that make sense? You don't have the problem of contract until you actually have a person that have agreed to a price point, okay? So where do I start from? I start from 40%, 40% of whatever the market value is, okay? And then I ne if they say, are you crazy? Don't waste my time. And then they hang up on you. Don't worry about it. Go to the next lead, okay? Go to the next lead. If they say, oh, no, I'm going to need a little bit more than that, like, so tell me, tell if they are still engaged in a conversation with you, which is why it's very important to build rapport and have conversation, ask them questions, ask them at least 10 questions about the property before you start throwing numbers of offers out there. As a matter of fact, say, hey, let me let me crunch some numbers and get back to you and see how much you can pay for this property. Give them some space. Let them, you know, because your question, when you say, when you say, uh, what do you think the property is worth right now? And they tell you their number, you write that down. You're not you're not hearing that so you can give them a reply and say, hey, you must be crazy. No, that's not why you're doing that. You just want to get them talking, okay? This is a lot of psychology, much more than it is about the numbers when you're negotiating because it's negotiations, right? And you're essentially trying to get them to like you so that they can have listening ears to, to whatever you have to say. From a, from a, So let's look at those numbers right now. So let's look at this property. We're going to look at uh, 4153 South Logan. So you simply click on it. Again, go play with this software. Go to empirebigdata.com, sign up, and test it out, okay? Now, you can test it at empirebigdata.com, okay? All right, so we go here. Uh, you can see that this property has some pictures, you know. Um, um, property looks pretty clean, but it's vacant. And it looks like a pretty clean neighborhood too, right? Pretty nice, right? Central AC, it looks like, all right? So it may just need some updates, a little bit of update, maybe new countertops, make, you know, update the kitchen to look more, uh, more than age. You spend less than $5,000 on this baby, put it back on the market. Somebody's making 30 grand. You help our investor find this, they gave you seven grand. They gave you $12,000 to help them find this deal, right? You just never know, all right? So I'm going to close that. So we'll go here. We're going to see what the property is worth. We can see the person's name, the owner of the property right there, Pamela. Okay. Uh, remember, that 30 cents will help you find the phone number and the email addresses of these people, right? Uh, let's scroll down. You can see here uh, property was purchased. 
back in 2003, you can expect that your list will not have anything less than five years old. That means the property have been owned for a while, which is another reason why they may say, you know, let me just get rid of the property. The person that bought a property last year and is just sitting there vacant right now, they're not necessarily motivated enough to want to sell the property. Okay. That's the importance of these numbers. Okay. If you have any questions right now, I'm ending this in about five minutes, just so you know. Ask your questions right now. I will be ending this in five minutes. If you have any questions, ask it right now so I can answer live. You can ask it in the chat box and then we'll answer live, okay? We'll be back here tomorrow at 4 p.m., just so you know. All right, so you can see if the, if the property is in fact on a, on a pre-foreclosure list, you can see a pre-foreclosure tab here. If the property wasn't on a pre-foreclosure list, this tab would not be here, okay? So when was the list pending recorded? List pending is the same thing as default, okay? Or list pending is, I think it's a French for a pending lawsuit. That means they are looking to file a lawsuit of foreclosure against this person. What is the date? It was filed in September 2019. What we know is that it's not foreclosed on yet. Okay. Sometimes it takes months. Sometimes they catch up on payment and then they late again. And, you know, these are reasons why people want to sell, right? But we know it's on fifth foreclosure. We're not going to worry about that. Let's go to comparables. The comparables tab is where you can evaluate what the property is worth. Okay. You can see what the property is worth really quickly. What I like to do is I like to go back six months to a year. Okay. Six months to one year. Six months, preferably, especially in a tight market. You want to make sure you're going back no more than six months because, again, uh, the criteria are tighter to figure out the value of a property. If it's too far into the past, it's an indication that that value is no more valid, okay? Because you purchased a property at $500,000 last year doesn't mean it's worth $500,000 today. If you purchased it three months ago at $500,000, it's more likely that it's still worth $500,000 because it's more recent. Does that make sense? So let's go back to six months. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's November 11th, okay? So this will only pull up data from November 11th. This one says it defaults to 0 0.5 miles, but I can go back to one mile, okay? So it needs to be within one mile radius of the property, okay? And now we can see a lot more data. And what I like to do is I'll deselect this, and then I will go under square footage. Okay, not square footage, sorry. Uh, price per square footage, okay? And I order from top to bottom by clicking on the column header, okay? So it goes from top to the, the highest to the lowest, okay? And I need highest to the lowest because I need to know the highest potential of property sales in the area based on size, weighted for size, right? I'm going to click the first five, okay? Really, the appraisers, the official appraisers use only three, okay? When I pick the top five, when I click the top three, it's telling me 152, but when I click the top five, it's telling me $138,000. The property is worth $138,000 right now, Okay. So $138,000 right now, the property is worth right now without considering what it could mean three months from now with the effect of everything that the world is going through right now. But we're always going to pay for less than what the property is worth now. So again, this business is here to, say, to stay and there's a wave of opportunities coming. Okay. All right. There's waves of opportunity. Krishna say, I want to help you hit your goal. All right. That would be nice. But, um, you know, I have bigger goals than the likes. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. So, um, but once it's two minutes time here, we're going to wrap up. All right. So, uh, let's say uh, two, one, two, three. The thing is that more people will come back and watch the replay later. So, it's absolutely fine. Um, let's see. Okay. So, we got the top five here and then we got 138,000. What is, so what is 40%? So, once I talk to this person, I build rapport with them. I talk about their story. Are they trying to move? Where are they moving to? And I'll tell them, let me let me get back to you. I'll call you back in about, can you hang in? I'll call you back in about an hour. And I have an offer for you. Basically, my offer will start at 40% of $138,000, okay? By the way, during the conversation, I would have been filling on them and see if they will be open to this. I will have an idea already. So that will be my offer, $55,200. That would be where I would start from. Like, listen, my offer, my cash offer is saying $55,200. If you lock that in, right, and basically the idea is you sell the contract to another person for extra $10,000, 
that person will pay 55 for the property, $10,000 for the property, put in some work and end up selling the property for $138,000. That's why you're making money because you're creating value for investor. You're creating value for a person that needs to get rid of a property and you're creating value for attorneys that will close the deals for title companies that will close the deals. There are a lot of people making money in between. Okay. That's why you're making money. It's not get rich quick. It's you're making money because you learned a new skill set. You find deals and you go through the same process that I've gone through right now. Very simply. Okay. So again, how much are they paying taxes? This this taxes, annual taxes of three thousand dollars on this property for every time the property is sitting down vacant. Then even if they own it free and clear, they're spending three thousand almost four thousand dollars per month. That's why they would need to sell. Is that making sense? And uh, as far as the mortgage against this property, let's see, mortgage against this property, they, they own they owe only $35,000. So they can still walk away with $20,000 if you paid $55,000 for this property. Does that make sense? All right, so that's that's where we're gonna end this today. Thank you so much, Krishna, for hanging out. I see your name quite a bit, I appreciate that. Uh, the two other people hanging out with me now, if you missed, you missed a lot. Make sure you go back and rewind the video and watch it from the beginning to the end. You missed a lot. There's a lot that's going on in the business and you need to be up to date. That's why I'm doing this 4 p.m. every day because I will bring you the update. I know what the gurus are talking about. They're all scared. But you don't have to be scared because I've been warning you for months before March, before February, before the situation hit, right? And there's a way for you to position yourself to take advantage. And now is the very, very important time to take advantage of the coming wave of opportunities into real estate. You can absolutely take advantage of a lot. These are things I wish I knew back in 2008. I will keep you updated. If you have any questions, continue to post it in the, in the, in the chat area, in the comment area. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. That software that I'm using right there is called um, PropStream and you can, uh, I've basically found a deal where you can try it for free okay just go to empire big data you can try for free for the next seven days play around with the data look around your county your local county see how the numbers work and see and uh how much how much more fun it is when you're using it you says a lot more fun when, you, when you're using it yourself and if you're brand new here i do have uh two books that i wrote about this business smart real estate wholesaling okay I'm just uh Spot real estate wholesaling. You can download the PDF for free at myempirepro.com. Okay, just go to myempirepro.com. All right, and if you go there right now, I'll give you this in addition to that for free. Hopefully, you've been enlightened, educated, and I will see you on the next one. See you right back here tomorrow at 4 p.m. Bye now. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.